let's say you need a little bit of lemon juice. You usually take your lemon and you cut it in half, and then you use a little bit of lemon juice, and then you've got all this lemon left over, so you put it in the fridge or something. And then when you come back, it looks like this. It's all rotten and dry and dehydrated and just rancid. You don't really want to use it anymore, and it's hard and crunchy like this one. There must be a better way to preserve your lemon and still get your juice. Well, there is. This is how. You take your lemon and you roll it, and then you want to take a sort of pin and just poke it in the bottom of the lemon, the exact bottom where the point is here. And then you squeeze and all the lemon juice you want just pours out. Now the great thing is it's got a very small little hole in it now so oxygen can't really get into it and make it rot so it will stay fresher for longer. Sometimes you want to spread some butter, but when you take it out of the fridge, the butter is super hard and really hard to spread. This is super annoying. So what do you do? You usually just pop it in the microwave, but the issue with this is it always seems to over melt the butter and make it into a big soupy mess just like this. That can be very annoying. So there must be a better way. Well, there is. You take a cheese grater and then you just grate your butter stick. Yes, that's right, grate your butter stick. Now that's got two added benefits. One, it delivers energy to the butter by the grating motion, which makes it a bit softer. And also the higher surface area makes it softer quicker also. Lastly, it's in this funny, interesting spaghetti-like consistency, which now is super spreadable, so you can just spread it on whatever you want, and you have nice soft butter. Success. You just take a knife and a potato and you put them together and just twirl the potato around while you cut into the skin just softly in a circular motion. Then you take it and you cook it like you normally would. Now, by cooking the skin with the potato, you actually infuse the potato with more flavor because most of the flavor of the potato is actually in the skin. So you get more potatoey mash. And once you've cooked it, you can just pull the skin off just like this. And it's so much more efficient. You don't waste any potato and it's much quicker than peeling it. Take a hard boiled egg, place it in a jar, add a little bit of water to cover. Then you just place your hand over the jar and shake it like mad. And once you're done, which is pretty soon, you just take the egg out and the shell is basically falling off the boiled egg. And it's that easy to remove. All right. Trick number five, staying on the same shaking idea. This is a garlic bowl. And I'm just gonna place it in a jar. And again, shake like mad. Okay, once you've done that for a little bit, then you just pop it out and you just remove some of the husks because they'll get in the way later. Okay, once you remove the husk, just put all these garlic cloves back inside. All right, put the lid back on. And again, shake like crazy. Keep shaking. Just carry on shaking. And now you just pop it out and all the skins have separated from the cloves. You can just pick them away and put them to one side. And then you've got these beautiful little garlic cloves and if any of the skins are still on, you can put them in the jar and shake again or just easily pull it off very easily like that. Okay. I hate it when you have old bread and it's super hard and you can't use it anymore. That's why I always keep my bread inside a plastic bag so it stays soft, just like this one here. And then you can still resuscitate it. So here I've got soft bread, but it's very, very old. And to resuscitate it, all you're gonna need is just some water. So I'm just gonna put this here so I can pour some water over it. Basically just pour the water over it and pour it on the bottom also. And then you wanna place it into an oven at 180 degrees Celsius. That's 356 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're gonna to wanna to leave it in there for about three minutes. And after three minutes have passed, then you just wanna turn it around and then hit it up for another about three minutes. If it's still soft or not done enough, then leave it a bit longer. But once it's done, then you just pull it out and it's crispy again and crunchy, just like it was from the bakers. And the inside is nice and soft and tender and steamy and just delicious, fresh bread and this is like an old bread this is like a week old really but it's super usable again and just great to use so give this a try at home and let me know what you think for this trick let's assume you can't find your bottle opener but you do happen to find your blowtorch well just take it and turn it on then aim it at the little air gap in between the cork and the wine 
and what will happen is it will heat up the air and make it expand pushing the cork out the top in a nice little explosive bang just like this success all right now just turn your blow torch off and pour out your wine like you usually would and enjoy it there we go done All right, so this next trick is called the black egg. And for this, you're just gonna crack an egg into a bowl and then separate out the yolk. The simplest way to do this is just with a spoon, you scoop it out like this and just pop it in the other bowl. Now, I'm gonna add some black cuttlefish ink, but if you don't like the savory, fishy taste that this has, you can always just use black food coloring and just mix it together like this. Okay, once you've mixed it together, then you're gonna wanna fry it. So here I'm gonna put some oil on a pan and here I'm just gonna Plop it in. Now, one thing that happens though is when you beat egg whites, they become a bit more runny, so it'll spread out a lot more than you want. If that happens, just simply push the sides in like this, just to keep it in an egg sort of shape. All right, now you're gonna to want to add your egg yolk back in. So just add it on like this and put it into position where you want it to be. Okay, once it's done cooking, there you go. It's simple, done. Just cook it like you would a normal sunny side up fried egg. And this is just a very simple way to make something mundane look very, very different and interesting. I hope you enjoy it. Sometimes you've got some eggs and you just don't know whether they're fresh or not. Now it's kind of impossible to look at an egg and know if it's fresh, even though most grocery stores these days do print the date on them just like so. But sometimes these days get rubbed off because of some other reason that we just don't know. Now in that kind of case, what do you do to figure out if an egg is fresh or not? Well, here's a simple trick. Just drop your egg in some water and the fresh ones will sink to the bottom just like this. And the unfresh ones will float to the top just like so. Now the great thing about this trick is you can do it with multiple eggs if you happen to have a big enough tub. And then you can easily detect which eggs are fresh and which eggs are no good. For example, here, these two are no good, and I'm just gonna dispose of them and cook with the rest. All right, so now I'm gonna show you an amazing new way to make poached eggs even better. Start off by taking an egg and separating it like this. Now you wanna take some basil or albahaca in Spanish and just finely chop it up. So cut it like this and chop it up like that. Now you can use any other herb you like, but the combination I'm about to show you is pretty good. Okay, so take your basil and add it to your egg whites just like this, and then add a little bit of mozzarella cheese, but you can add any other cheese you like, or any other ingredients for that matter. You can put little bits of mushroom or little bacon bits, whatever you like with eggs. Okay, once it's mixed up, take another bowl, take some cling film, dent it into the bowl, then spray it with oil so that you can unstick it later, and place half your mixture into the bowl like this. Now place your egg yolk, and cover it up with the rest of the mixture, just like so. Okay, now to close it up, you just bring up the sides and you can either tie this into a knot or use a little piece of string and tie a knot around it. Or you can use one of these simple, cheap little clamps and just clamp it shut. Now you can get this everywhere. It's no point mentioning it. Okay, now to cook it, I'm gonna place it in some simmering water for five minutes to get a nice runny egg yolk. But you can cook it a little bit longer if you want to have a more hard egg yolk. Okay, so once it's done, you just take it out and then you just unclamp it and I'm gonna place it here on some bread and it's delicious like this, but you can also add it in say an Eggs Benedict recipe or some salad or just anywhere you wanna use a poached egg. This is just way better and more tasty. 